Hello and welcome, League players and lurkers, friends and neighbors. This is a finals game for a tournament. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. That's right. Goldilocks zone. It's right in the middle. It's medium games. I'm Seanahan, and I'm here with, as they say in New Orleans, Leze Le Bantam H Relay, H Roll. How you doing, H Roll? Yeah. That's the normal reaction people hear when I say pretty much anything, so I'm used to it. Um, we've already started, and DZ has hated this board, so the over-under on seconds until DZ says they hate something has been met, and it is two seconds um, into the match. We've... Research is f nice with Fortress. Uh, cavalry is nice here, hunting party... Maybe you can play with Witch for some draw, although Hunting Party draws quite a bit. Dungeon can be nice. Quarry can be nice with Nomad Camp. There's all sorts of good stuff going on here. Or Cavalry is definitely something to at least think about when you see the two cards together. Yeah, so if you have two Quarries in play, you can just click um, Cavalry. Well, you have to click Cavalry and Actions, Cavalry and Actions ten times, but you can just empty the whole pile. Uh, and if you have two more money, you'll take all of the silica points. It's true. It, it almost makes it worth it. Uh, research seems research on fortress is quite nice. Um, set aside four cards for the next turn, and you keep your fortress. But also, research on cavalry seems nice because you don't really want that many cavalries in your deck. Um, I think I stand by the witch play in the five-two open. You, I think, rather have. 3-4, but that early witch could definitely do some damage. Mm -hmm. I decide if I'd rather have 3-4. I don't know, witch open looks nice. This dungeon's pretty good, though. And are we doing dungeon quarry already? I think the plus buy makes, makes me want to open like dungeon quarry. You're pretty much guaranteed to hit 5 on turns 3 or 4, if not completely guaranteed. Um, I guess you could bottom deck both of them, but then you're building up an engine, you add some fortresses, you add some cavalries, and you probably want to add a courtier. Courtier can reveal what? Dungeon, research, witch. Those are the multi-types. Yeah, I mean, these cur the curses are annoying to get rid of here. You've got research, but it's really slow to trash. And they'll clog up your hunting parties if you go for a hunting party draw. Um, yeah. It kind of makes up for the weird opening split of 5-2 not being able to buy a few things. I'm not quite sure what one does here. Is that sound you just get a hunting party already? Um, a research? Thinking hunting party. Um, between the dungeon and the hunting party, you should be able to see that witch pretty often. Give out quite a few curses, and then build up and add the fortress, add the research along the way, just to try to find money so you can build up the engine while the curses are slowing slowing your opponent down. Yeah, you should have four sometimes. So I'd like to Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, the levels are fine on my recording. Um, so if you touch your levels, H let me know. Uh, so let's see. This is a nice. Um, I think you save one estate here as as sounder, and that. Uh, well, then you trigger you trigger a bad shuffle though, but you trigger a bad shuffle potentially. Depends on when you draw the research. If you don't draw the research, you flip the whole deck over. And then I guess you play you play Hunting Party, you draw two. You're going to have two bad cards on top of your deck, I think, in this case, if you discard Copper Estate. But if you discard two estates, you run the risk of not seeing, not seeing the thing. So this is like really dicey shuffle to trigger, but you've kind of forced yourself into it at this point. Uh, with this line. Three bad cards? Yeah, yeah, even, yeah. So, this is what I was thinking, like, if you discard both estates, you may not, you may find the estate or the research, you're very unlikely to find both, but you'll have a decent shot of not triggering this bad shuffle. Uh, 
I mean, you just have to play the witch here and accept. We don't even have a dungeon coming in play either, which is a bit a bit sad. But we should be able to get overlapping dungeons going. Looks like the top two cards are pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> if you top deck hunting party and dungeon, uh, you're gonna do all right, I think. Sporting Elijah has gone with a witch themselves. I'm not. I, I don't know. I guess you want to get in. You don't want to get all the curses, but it feels like you want to get hunting parties going, and get draw up, and the witch has a high opportunity cost. Although I guess if you're going to take 10 curses, it's going to be really tough to win. You've got to fight that. I don't know. I kind of like something going and then getting a bunch of hunting party. Yeah. So again, we're, I guess we have another dungeon as a sounder in the discard pile. Is, or is the bottom card? It's a lot more fine because we'll have a dungeon in play. Yeah, but it looks like the bottom card is a dungeon here, which we're going to draw dead and, <laughs> again, trigger a somewhat bad shuffle. But you're right, we have a dungeon in play, so we just discard two estates, play the witch, and then, you know, we'll have a three-card shuffle with three bad cards, but the dungeon should mitigate that. Maybe we buy a second hunting party here for the draw. Um, and some Basilica points, potentially. The alternative is a courtier or a fortress. I don't really think I'm in on either of those, right? Quite yet. I also buy the cavalry. Yeah, we've only got seven money in the deck, I think is the problem. So once we bought the cavalry, even if we draw a deck, we're down to... Oh, yeah, right. So maybe there's some argument to buying a quarry here. Um, okay, so this gets us to a clean shuffle, and we buy a silver. Oh, we just—I don't know why we kept the cavalry instead of the copper. So we bought a cap. Yeah, so we could have had three there and bought a silver. Silver, of course, is a really bad card with uh, um, with our hunting party, but it's not clear to me that that cavalry was worth worth having bought there. Dungeon would have been better than nothing. Else. Yeah, I'm kind of considering even wanting to research the cavalry already. Um, even if we can hit four, like the goal, I think, should be now to hit four so we can buy a quarry. Well, if we research Calorie, we probably won't hit for this. Yeah, that is indeed the problem. Um, and we can play one hunting party and see what what it draws for us. Um, certainly, it's going to find that curse, I suppose. Uh, the curse or the cavalry. Um, both of which are in the discard pile. So this is going to trigger... Probably we should play this research first because we've only got coppers and estates left and Hunting Party's going to toss those anyways. Um, I think... Oh, we still we still owed... We played both dungeons last turn. Um, this is all, all quite awkward. Yeah, and we, we have, I think... Copper curse left down there. So this is again sort of a pass turn, two pass buys in a row for S Sounder. We didn't even. Um, I guess we played Witch both turns, so we're doing something moderately productive. Yep, and research to stay. Yeah, so you know we do need to probably get Cordiers here as S Sounder. Um, Elijah had a simpler turn and was able to get a big set aside and bought their own hunting party. The witch just kind of makes this more awkward. Like, if we didn't have a witch here, the building, I think, is much faster. We could add in the court quarries and the courtiers, uh, the courtiers. Uh, yeah, probably you've got the cavalry, so the fortress seems okay. Um... How does Hunting Party play with the extra horses from Cavalry? I guess it's fine. It's going to seek them out, potentially. 
And um, Elijah's got the extra research, which is kind of nice for working your way through through the curses. And it looks like they're getting a cavalry here for draw. They just didn't want to play the witch. I, again, the, every time they play a hunting party and it gets, a, it gets into the clean shuffle and they're left with this witch at hand. Um, as I said, I would have opened Quarry on a 4-3. I, I think in a 5-2 you gotta, gotta go with the witch, but on a 4-3 I think I'm pretty happy to get a Quarry. So a sounder has got um, to discard some coppers here. They can play Fortress Witch and then decide what they want to do with this this cavalry. Um, I think now for a sounder, um, another courtyard seems possible. Ah, they did the research Fortress trick, um, which is nice. And they didn't really set aside anything particularly useful other than that horse. So it was a pretty clean... Um, clean research, they need to play the witch now, the horse. There's some question, I guess, as to whether you play the cavalry first, but I think you play the cavalry last with a dungeon in play and a horse set aside and not wanting to play the witch and draw horses dead. But looks like they drew enough horses to get a clean shuffle here. I believe the bottom two cards are Copper and Curse. Oh, yeah. So now I guess we grab a... Uh, I can believe in Quarry or Cordier. I can believe in either of those cards. So I think Quarry, because you can do Cavalry Fortress turns where you buy a Cavalry and then Fortress and then build up that way, but the plus buy is also really nice with the quarry. And you do still have three more stop cards that you're not looking at. Okay. It feels like they're focused more on thinning than ramping up payload. I think this is a spot where we can somewhat aggressively ramp up our payload with court, courtier and quarry. But yeah, I mean, it's like the deck control's in a weird place right now with like researches draw. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you have two researches, you can, you know, research one zero cost and then research a fortress every, every turn. Well, you can't research, you can research a fortress every turn or you can research a zero cost. You can't do both. <laughs> do some. Yeah, three researches you could. Yeah. yeah, but I, I would want two of those three researches to be quarries, I think. Because um, once you've got quarries and like courtiers for plus buy, you can just grab hunting parties really cheap. And it doesn't seem worth it to keep adding researches when you could be adding hunting parties, which seem much better cards. Um, what if Sanders? doing here most likely is tracking what's left in their deck. We're looking at two coppers and a curse, I believe. Um, so here we can play like dungeon, set, discard two curses and set them aside with the state. Um, and then play a horse. We can also play, yeah, we can't play cavalry to the end with that line, but that's a reasonable dungeon set aside, discard two curses, set them both aside by trash from the estate, and then uh, get some horses and potentially add something. I do not like trash and curse over estate here, since we're not doing anything with this extra money. But... Well, my thought is I would rather have their research in my deck than not have it. Yeah, I mean, I guess you, you, you researched... Did we research earlier in this turn? We had a research coming into play this turn. So we have two researches in deck next turn. Yeah. Which I guess is fine. 
have a call. Okay. Okay. So it looks to me like hunting party here. No, I mean, I think Cordier makes the most sense. You can get coins by off of which and not play the cavalry next turn or even research the cavalry. And then next turn, get like Cory hunting party. And then you get the draw. Stuff is cheap. You can start adding two hunting parties, hunting party, Cordier, fortress, um, add some nomad camps in there and just start ramping up, uh, ramping up the payload that way. We also have to watch out for piles. The curses have run now, and with quarries, the cavalries can run almost instantly. And I expect that the hunting parties will will lower quite a bit. So um, it doesn't look like it, but this is the kind of kingdom that could end in you know two turns from where we are right now. And Sporting Elijah's in a tough spot, having all these extra curses in their deck. Especially because, of course... S. Sounder got the witch on turn one, so they've played it a couple more times. So with Hunting Party, with Dungeon Null, you just discard the worst two cards in your hand, so here you discard Copper Estate. But you have Research, so you want to possibly be able to research the estate. And you also have Hunting Party, so you have to worry about triggering shuffles by discarding uniques. So if you discard the two coppers, you don't really have to worry about triggering, you know, finding a unique and triggering a bad shuffle, potentially. Uh, but also because we're playing this Terminal Draw Witch as our last terminal, we often want to uh, trigger a somewhat bad shuffle with a couple of cards and draw into it with Witch and, you know, move on from, from there. So this is a, a somewhat tricky, tricky set of things going on. And they didn't find, I mean, they've got one Hunting Party in deck, so they shouldn't reliably find it every turn, but this seems like a spot where they can pick up the quarry now. Um, go ahead and trash this, trash this fortress. Sorry, trash the cavalry. You don't really need to play the cavalry. Um, you'll be able to um, use hunting parties for draw, and then you want to be able to play Cordier for coins by instead of action coins. Um, and yeah, get the quarry here seems like the best piece now. And then next turn, you can try to add one draw card um, either hunting party or or uh, fortress kind of card. Um, so it looks like they took a different tack. They went with the cavalry here. Um, apparently, just the cavalry is not a great card for the deck. Um, so they kind of just want to immediately trash the cavalry. All they did was draw a fortress curse. Um, they can play the fortress now and hope to draw the hunting party, um, which they've now set aside. Um, so to me, this seems like kind of a wasted turn. They didn't play the witch. They didn't play a dungeon even. Um, well, take that back. They found, they found stuff. Um, they found the horse. So um, we're triggering a somewhat bad shuffle here. I guess there's a horse in there. We've set aside a lot of stuff. We've added an extra terminal. We don't have enough money to buy anything. Um, all in all, I would have preferred anything stopping earlier buying a quarry for the, for the engine value and then trashing the cavalry as just another terminal that we don't need. Um, as S Sounder has basically three and a half terminals now in one village. Um, I'll call the Cordier a half terminal because I don't really want to take plus action on it ever. I want to take plus buy points most of the time. Although potentially once we have cor quarries in play, the plus buy is all we really need because the actions we want to buy are going to be free. And we still didn't find the dungeon, it looks like. Um, or we did... Oh, we set aside the dungeon. Yeah, so that's, that's fine. We've lost our dungeon balance, but we don't necessarily need to have that play both dungeons both turns. Thanks, Mark. I'm back. So what do we have going on now? Uh, S. Sounder played their turn on with the cavalry and kind of fizzled out and wasn't able to buy anything. Oh, uh, I saw they took a 2 VP copper. Yeah. Uh, wait. Whoa. That can't be right. Especially with the 6-4 split lead and you feel, you know, I feel like S. Sounder's got a bit of a lead here. Their first player, they got the witch in the open. Um, and they had six to four triumphal arch points. So they're not really worried about Sporting Elijah getting a sneaky pile out with more points. I think you just need to focus on get the two quarries, <laughs> buy a bunch of hunting parties, and then pile out the cavalries. 
Um, I even wonder with Cordier Cavalry, if you have a dual type in hand, if you buy Cordier Cavalry, then you can draw them both, play the Cordier for plus buy, action buy. Does that loop? Uh, that's losing money. You're losing... I guess with three Cordiers. If you have two Cordiers in hand, then you're losing one. You're losing one. You're losing one per turn. Um, can you potentially play some of those for plus coins action or something? Uh, sure, sure. It might be enough to pop. It's at least something to consider, the kind of thing you want to be able to consider doing here. But you have to have at least two quarries to make anything like that work. And once you have two quarries, the deck just zooms in my mind. Um, and I guess you need... Yeah, I mean, I guess you have all these coppers still. We're not going to get rid of by the time. So you may have six money to start the chain with. Um, I think the draw and the actions are there. You just can't play the witch. You have to hold the witch or a dungeon or a research or something. I would strongly consider re researching a witch here as both players. Oh, yeah. No need for the moat. Well, well, is it the only, or is it the dual type? Hmm. It's the only dual type this turn, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, they have a second dungeon. Alright. Yeah, just often you're going to end up playing that dungeon in the middle of the turn. So maybe you have to keep the keep the witch for a while, but I, I certainly want to get rid of the cavalry too, because again, we only have one terminal slot for all of the stuff. This to me seems pretty clear. Just buy Cory and, you know, get whatever value you can out of this turn, horses or whatever. Um, okay, so they were able to do coins buy, which is a little bit sad because seven is not really a price point that does very much for us. Oh, they had eight because they bought the copper. Edge cased. Oh my gosh. Um, so if they discard... Cavalry Curse. They can buy Cory Cavalry. Uh, and then possibly draw the Cory. That seems like too much. I think just Cory Fortress now for as Sounder. It's with the Cory Cory and Dream. I mean, I believe in Cory Cory strongly. Because even if you only find one, you only have to find $2 to get the other, other Cavalry and then the turn continues. And then you like research the Cavalries and Maybe you just buy eight cavalries, all the cavalries in a turn, and your opponent resigns out of frustration, not realizing that you maybe can't do anything with that deck. Triumphal Arch. Yeah. So Triumphal Arch is second most common action card. So there's at least something there to the person who has the most cavalries, and then you play them and get lots of horses or something and have lots of VP there. It also means that my cavalry cord cordier dream does net uh, does net VP for whatever that's worth. Playing that courier after the witch, like a bit of play there. Yeah, yeah, because they could have taken plus actions and added two horses to the deck. Um, so yeah, I'm really surprised by the lack of quarries. That seems like pretty clearly the best. Cory and then Hunting Party seem like the two most important cards here. Um, so we need to figure out, and it, S. Sounder has added more, one village and one terminal to a deck that was already somewhat over-terminaled. We'll see if they're able to correct that this turn. I think they probably also want to try to do the research at zero cost this turn to get some research balance going. Um, but, like, yeah, we're seeing they set aside a fortress and a horse. Those are cards we'd really like to see. I feel like this deck's not drawing itself every turn anyway. Yeah, but if we added three more hunting parties, I feel like we could we could get there. It's somewhat... I mean, it's, it yeah. doesn't hurt too much right now to... Those cards away next turn. It's somewhat hard to actually see both quarries in a turn if you're using Hunting Party Draw, which I guess is something to consider. Um, 
So I'm desperately hoping here that S. Sounder buys a quarry and a hunting party. Um, those seem like the best two cards to add to the deck. Hunting party is more draw. Quarry makes stuff cheaper so they can take buy with Cordier instead of uh, coins. And we got half the way there, I guess. Uh, we'll see if, if they are able to uh, to spot the quarry line later or if they've got another pileout line. Um, I feel like S. Sounder was in a pretty dominant position, but they've not really put their their uh, foot to the pedal, as it were. Yeah. Seems like Sport and Legends getting down control. I'm not sure why they... Just for I get Fortress here. Well, I wanted to research the Fortress first to get a, to get those four cards into hand and then figure out what to do after that. Well, it doesn't get them into hand. It gets them... Yeah, I meant into 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 Matt, wherever Matt is. Um, again, I feel like if Swing Lodger buys a quarry right now, they are yeah, taking the quarry, yeah. they are taking the lead in this this game. But both players have sort of ignored it. So what when we think about quarry, the qualities that make it good is basically are there good actions that you want to buy? Yes. Are is there plus buy? Yes, there's no man camp and cordier, and we want to buy lots of hunting parties and fortresses and cordiers and cavalries. It meets both those qualities. And then there's also the additional crazy combo of cavalry plus quarry, <laughs> where you could just buy them all for zero. Which seems like uh, seems like a lot of fun. It's just very demoralizing when you're like, all right, maybe I'll use a cavalry or not. It's like, oh no, my opponent just bought six of them in their turn. Really? Triumphal Park works with the like having a lot of cavalrys is going to be kind of weird for Paolo. Yeah. I have no knowledge of this being a, a, a dad son matchup um, at all. I do not think that is true, but perhaps it is. Spreading misinformation in 2021. Yeah. I'd like to get a source on that, Truffles, if you can. Okay. It's been confirmed by someone else. It's been confirmed by the least reliable source on the internet. So the other kind of awkward thing, we have to play the, I guess we play Cordier Research, we take action by action coins, we can research the fortress, draw a bunch of stuff, play some cavalries, get some horses going. I want cavalry before researching fortress. Yeah, I mean, I guess we have we have to discard two cards. Oh, we discard two curses. So yeah, we play one cavalry. The discard piles two curse. Oh, is it two curses? Two coppers and a fortress. Um, so it's five cards in the discard pile. Maybe researching this fortress is a little dicey then, even with a dungeon coming into play. Um, I believe we have another hunting party down here as well. So something else we could do is play the fortress and then research the cavalry. And yeah, maybe play the fortress, maybe we draw the hunting party. And if not, we research we play cavalry, research cavalry, you know, do the nomad camp courtier thing. That gets us to counting. Um, ten and three buys if we want. Either way, we can play this research first. Um, maybe they're... Do like 10 and 3 buys. <laughs> 10 and 2 buys. Yeah, Hunting Party and Quarry. Hunting Party and Quarry is my answer. <laughs> Gonna be my answer on every buy until the game is over. Until they have two quarries. I, I haven't heard that one before. Um, I guess the thing is, yeah, even if you miss that cavalry auto piles with quarries, the, just the fact that quarry interacts really nicely with 
all the actions that you want to buy in this action dense kingdom seems like enough to me to make make to want to work. Maybe you miss the auto pile. You might only want one Cordae. Yeah, that, that's reasonable because Nomad Camp and Cordae are both generating some points along with uh, along with the action. But I think once you get the once you get the one Cordae and get it in play and be like, wow, cavalry costs two. And then you're like, wait, cavalry costs two? What if cavalry costs zero? Um, you know, the wheels start churning in the back of the head, and we see. Um, so, <laughs> as some definitely bottom deck some really good cards uh, here, but and triggered a somewhat bad shuffle, but the, their, their set aside is so nice that I think they're going to be fine next turn. Be fine next turn. Um, is it the two Cory turn? <laughs> Honestly, I believe this is the two Cory turn. That is my opinion now. They've got three buys, and I think two Corys enable them to do some crazy things, even potentially pile out Cavalry Cordiers next turn. Um, using the sort of autopile trick that I mentioned, where you lose one coin each time, but they've got you know eight coins this turn. So if you lose one current coin each time, you still pile out the Cordiers and Cavalries for a win. If that works, I'm not 100% sure that that it works, but it seems like it, okay. uh, it, it draws two and then it refreshes its buys. So. Yeah, you just have to keep in act. You just have to keep a two type in hand. You do have to draw through your whole deck. That's a thing you have to do. Yeah. It doesn't help. Research can help with that, though. Certainly. All right, so Sporting Lodge has a research coming into play. And I assume we lead on the dungeon here, hope to find a hunting party. How many curses are in the trash? Um, six. Uh, six curses, six estates. So if you're using hunting party as draw, it is quite nice to be able to research away all of those, those curses. Um, they both have two now, right? Yeah, and that was a nice nice order here because we get to the end of the shuffle. We can research with Cordier twice. That's a little bit sad. <laughs> the ordering here, we have to play the Cordier. The, you know, we only we lose a type for our last Cordier. Um, we have to take plus action. So it's as if we played it on a single type. Oh no, we had... Yeah. So... For Sporting Lodge, I would go Hunting Party Quarry here as my line. Um, At this point, we should just assume that that's not happening. I'm going to keep suggesting it until my dying day or until someone in chat gives me a better a better pairing. So, let's see. I mean, I assume we just discard two Curses, the hunting party is going to go find them anyways. Um, but we don't want the hunting party to find a, um, find a oh, copper. Seven other coppers. <laughs> yeah. Um, we do have another research down there. And uh, a courtier. I think they have two researches now. Or like three total. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're right. There's th th there's. I think they bought hunting party research last year. Three have been bought, which is several more than I think uh, should have been bought. But um, we're playing the fortresses very early in this turn. I'm not quite, I'm not quite understanding what uh, what they're doing with these fortresses. But it does look like we're we're fairly close to a sounder drawing deck here. Um, if not all the way to a sounder drawing deck, we discarded um, a copper. We have a copper and two curses left. This and is kind of interesting, actually. Like normally with like these searches, draw you like pick up your bad cards or your good cards, and you can't play them every turn. But with hunting party, you could, like conceivably discard the bad cards, like also with dungeon. And then, like, ends up researching for the bad cards every turn. And then you... Not really have to thin, right? And then you have dungeon to get them out of that starting hand, so it's not even like you have to play with the hand of bad, extra bad cards. Well, well, the idea would be 
you like research to like tuck in all your bad cards every turn, so you like yeah basically never draw them. That really needs like a peddler. Peddler to me is like research at its best. Uh, peddler or alliance is the other one where research is really good because your deck is junky and you've got these extra golds. You're pretty happy to trash golds or or duchies to get big hands so you can hit ten again to get another alliance. I tried that against Steph once, and then they bought five. They bought five captains and played bureaucrat five times each turn. Yeah, I remember watching. Them. <laughs> the only one called Yeah, Infinite Farmer's Market VP. They also had Enchantress in case I somehow ever got to draw an action card. Wait, do we have a win here? Um, it just takes 12 money. I don't think we can get to 12 money. I really have 12 money inside our hands right now. Oh, we have 11. Okay, but it's like, it's close. We need, yeah, we could gain the gold, but we need the buy. We need the three buys. No, I think you have to start the Cordier Cavalry line with two buys as well. So you play Cordier Cavalry, you get up to one. Yeah, you have to you have to initiate buying cavalry with two buys. All right. So I kind of strongly want to just double research both these coppers. <laughs> or sorry, both these curses. curses and then say, okay, I've got two researches in the deck and my hunting parties are gonna be much cleaner and I've got rid of these crappy curses. Um, and then possibly see the shuffle with the cavalry. Yeah, but we were getting to with Nomad Camp Courtier as coins buy. We're getting to ten and three buys again. Which man, if stuff was too cheaper, we could buy three hunting parties or <laughs> two hunting parties in a quarry or a Courtier hunting party in a quarry for ten. But as it is, ten and three buys doesn't do a whole lot for us. Um, unless we get to like 12 or, or more. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable to me. That costs eight and two buys and you've got a third buy or even a fourth buy. So you could buy, depending on how much money you have, um, another fortress and hunting party or something. It's hard to do the math. You add one coin for quarry and then stuff costs two less and you add one buy for the cavalry. It gets complicated pretty quickly. So they're thinking about it. They, they had played the... They're going to set aside everything here. It looks like I don't know. I, I like the line where we we trashed the two curses, but maybe drawing to the end of the shuffle here enables us to do the gain and play. Although it seems like we're past the point where the players have spotted the gain and play lines, as you said. Both these players have played in other games in this tournament quite fast matches. And at times in this game, they've played very fast, but they've sort of... This is definitely a brain melt. Yeah. The, the thing... I worked out the Cavalry Cordier court, thing. I probably would have spent five minutes fully working out the consequences of it. And I think you get to the point where the first person to get two quarries in play just wins the game. <laughs> um, especially once the curses have run. So that's just something to to consider. We can do coins, but no, coins buy. Coin buy and then buy quarry cavalry. Yeah, I was thinking about coins gold, and I decided it was bad because the gold doesn't do anything for us. Uh, if we took coins buy instead, we we still have ten. We could do quarry cavalry. We, then we have three money and actions cost too. So yeah, we could buy the hunting party, um, which seems nice. The gold is really problematic 
here because of the hunting party draw. It's just another unique that our hunting party has to sift through in order to find find the step we need to kick off. Would the last card spell to be trashed? I feel like the death control is not the problem anymore. More like, you know, getting the best exponential multiplier in your deck. Yeah. But these hunting parties are drawing one card. So that was a, a quite bad order. We needed to have played the Fortress first, probably, and then played the Courtier first, because we can't even... I guess we can research this Fortress and draw one card. It's not a terrible shuffle, but if we play the Fortress before we play the Hunting Party, um, we can also play the Research on the Curse before we play the Hunting Party and get a clean shuffle that way. I think there's a couple of tricks you can use here to get clean shuffles. Um... As is, we've got two cards, a research and a, a proper, it looks like, down there. So it's not a uh, uh, research and a courtier down there, which is kind of sad. Um, although we do get to... <laughs> oh, Sporting Elijah fell, fell, uh, fell victim, and he, he, he got the gold as well. This is where we check the spec chat and see if the curse of Jane Ellis has occurred. Jane Ellis is not here, so it's not Jane Ellis, uh, Jane Ellis' fault. Oh, I didn't buy. It's true. Um, yeah, so now we're, we're getting close to the end of this game anyways. There's two hunting parties left, four fortresses, so we look like we're running down piles pretty hard. Um, and as Sounder has this four-point triangle or basilica lead. Um, and for both these players, I think fortress buying a fortress will score them more um three victory points so like as sounder could very legitimately take like a hunting party fortress well they can't buy three things because they don't have quarries yet but um it sounds they gain the gold so they have more payload than they used sure um, oh, they have another courtier too. So if they take both these as coins by, by two quarries and a cavalry, then can we pile out this turn? I'm pretty sure, yes, yes, but also that's not going to happen, right? It is not, almost certainly not going to happen. I agree, but a man can dream. Um, I think, I think, yeah, um, supporting, supporting the, the quarry stuff, um, is, it seems like it's, ha it seems like we're so close to it working. How many cards do we have in the discard pile? Yeah, they, they just research a fortress to quote unquote draw, and then I'm sure they have it. Yeah, someone can post this to... Um, find the win perhaps later um, from this decision point, but I'm pretty sure Cordier for action coins, um, sorry, action buy, coins buy, our action coins, action buy, and we've got the fortress too for another action, right? So we can, we can end with, we could have two buys, three buys and 12 coins and then do Cory Cory Cavalry. And that feels like that gets us almost all the way there. Um, and we just don't play a dungeon and we have this fortress for the action so we can play the fortress. Um, yeah, I'm fairly certain yeah, if you have sure. 12 coins and three buys, you buy Cory Cory Cavalry and that gets you back up to one buy. So you need 12 coins and you need another buy, but we have a nomad camp, right? Yeah. Um, and we did set aside three coppers in a fortress. Perhaps we should have thought about that research a little more before we played it. Because <laughs> we have more draw in the hand than we need. Like playing both the horses and the hunt hunting and the fortress before we... Expanding all of our draw before we go for it. But yeah, I mean, I think we get to 15 and four buys and we can buy two Corys cavalry and then do the Cordier cavalry spinning thing. I think we've got enough. We only need to do it five times, so we need to find five coins somewhere. 
<laughs> which seems possible. Um, this could be research witch. Um, research curse. There's two really good cards in the discard pile, <laughs> is all. But, um, action coins. Yeah, action coins, action coins, play the Nomad Camp, and we've got 15 and two buys, or 15, or 12 and three buys is where we're going to end up here. Which is not quite enough, I think, for the, the auto pile, but it is one it is one buy and a couple of coins short, I think, in the end. But you know, we can get there next turn too. Um, so twelve and three buys I would strongly consider Quarry. <laughs> fortress, fortress. Um, and just go for the pile out that way. Uh, we took gold. I really don't understand the purpose of the golds in the deck. Um, I'm actually just going to say they should buy triple quarry here. And then win next turn somehow. <laughs> Click cards and win next turn. It seems to me very possible that that would work. Yeah, so if you buy three quarries here... All you have to do is find two of them, then click end buys and click on the cavalries till they're mostly done, and then get some courtiers along the way. Need two courtiers, but yeah. Yeah, because they've got two courtiers and a nomad camp already, so they've got three buys. So they'll mostly draw through their deck on clicking on cavalries, and then they'll find the stuff and. So that you find two, that's fair. Yeah, three just, yes, you find two, and then the courtiers also cost zero, so all you have to do is see them for plus buy. Dungeon is a better way to find two than a third quarry, but uh, whatever. Yeah, so both players have three fortresses. Um, that center has four hunting parties, so a fortress does score for them if they're considering scoring. Which certainly is a thing that one should consider at this point. Looks like one, one. Yeah, and notably, Corey does not score any triumph large points. Maybe that's what they're considering. Well, now Etzada really is threatening to pile out hunting parties and fortress next turn. I think they can get to to seventeen and four buys with the extra fortress and stuff they set aside um, and the two gold they've got now. Am I being serious? I love hunting party at California. Yeah. With, with Corey Bice, of course. Yeah, the question is, can, can, can Sporting Elijah do that this turn? If they take coins by, I just they're... Sh win, right? Yeah, they, they would score... They'd score six points off Triumphal Arch by doing that, but that doesn't. Close. It doesn't seem like they they seem to be short either way. I'm um, taking. Yeah. Okay. They should click on which and take. They should click on which and take coins by. This is tough because they want to take just province, but province doesn't even get them a points lead. And they can't really touch Fortress or Hunting Party either. They can't take, like, Province Fortress because that doesn't get them anywhere. Um, I guess they hit double. So if S Sounder buys Hunting Party and three Fortresses, doesn't that score six? If they have six of each of those cards? Buys and gains of Fortress. They have four fortresses and five hunting parties. So two fortresses and a hunting party scores them six, which is a win. So they just have to find 17 money. 
which is two golds, seven coppers is 13. Nomad camp is 15. So one of the courtiers played for coins by the other one played for action for action coin action by um, nomad camp. And that's, so they need to play three, they need to, to get two fortresses in play, play all their treasures. And that seems like a win. Um, does anybody still have a curse left? No, all the curses are gone. Yeah, the horses are quite nice for, for drawing here. I need to actually use the keys here to pile out with two quarries. <laughs> yeah, take two quarries and a cavalry and then, then pile out the, the fortresses. Oh, now you can pile the cavalry and the hunting party. Oh, yeah, the, the last hunting party is only cost. And then you have um, triumph large points from cavalries. Um, but we can actually play take coins gold off of one of the courtiers if need be. Um, if we're struggling to completely draw through the deck. Um, our hunting party did flip over a hunting party at some point, which was sad. Um, but our discard piles pretty somewhat... Um, what's our discard pile? <laughs> they played a uh, hunting party in the top two cards for a hunting party, um, then copper and then fortress. So they've got two hunting parties in the discard pile. Um, so certainly, I think we just lead on the fortress here. We're not. We we don't. If we're going for the pile out, um, we want to draw stuff, and we can discard like the researches here. Those cards are useless for us. But it looks like we don't need to take action with either courtiers. So both courtiers now can take coins by. Um, coins by and nomad camp is 8, 11, 14. So we still need to find the other gold, which I believe is... Um, oh, that's in hand now. So we're at 9, 11, 17. I believe this is win in hand for... S S no, not... If they discard Hunting Party Research, play Fortress, play both Courtiers for Coins by Nomad Camp, that's 8, 11, 17, and 4 buys, and they can buy Hunting Party 3 Fortresses and end with 26 VP. Someone can double check my math, that's been known to be spotty before. Discards a Hunting Party. Yeah, they discarded a Copper, which means they don't, they needed that Copper, it was exact with that Copper. So... Doubling is just so sad here. <laughs> um, I guess the thing is, yeah, once you see the pile out, it's easy to see, but they may be forgetting the triumphal arch points. It's it's hard to work that out in real time while you're playing. Um, it's also a lot easier as a commentator, seeing both hands, seeing the kingdom interacting with chat, to notice these pile outs sometimes. What did they set aside with the research? Copper and three horses. Um, honestly, if they, like, yeah, with all these horses, if they just played the fortress, even after discarding the hunting party copper, if they played the fortress and drew a horse there, they're still going to find, going to find the win. Um, action buy. I assume this is, why did they take a buy if they're going to double province? Can they even double province? It doesn't look like they're... I mean, they still have the two quarries, one cavalry land. <laughs> um, indeed. So if they, right now, from this spot, they've got 14 money. And th so if they buy two quarries and a cavalry, um, then they have four money sorry they have five money and cavalry's cost zero and courtiers cost five so you just buy all the cavalries for zero and then they buy the hunting party and they win right two quarries cavalry 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 hunting party should get them to uh 26 vp i think because they'd have um they would have six hunting parties and six cavalries and currently the max action is only at uh, five hunting parties and four fortresses. Dominion math is hard sometimes, Atrial. Yeah. <laughs> it's like super easy while I'm 
saying it and talking. And one of the things I found myself is by commentating my games, I have to forcefully say out loud the math that I'm doing as opposed to just kind of doing it in the back of my head like I do in ladder games. And often just by, you know, the best way to to know that you've learned something correctly is to be able to teach it to somebody else. So if I actually have to explain my thought process and often I will come across, right, that doesn't quite work because I didn't, you know, I'm not counting everything up or um, <laughs> so on. You might not draw both quarries. Um, we actually have enough money here. But they did have a hunting party in hand. We have enough money here that we can buy another cavalry though for two. Um, because stuff costs zero, so we just buy another cavalry, and you like if you lose two money, it's fine at the end of the day. Um, we'll end that line in any case with two cavalries. They only have, they only have three extra money or something. Uh, it, it oh, the, work out. yeah, the cat, the ca the quarries both add one money to the count. Oh, but, you're right. I didn't that. So, quarry, quarry, cavalry, 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 hunting party should win here. If they see that line, which again, they've missed, I think there's just sort of, you know, sometimes when you're playing Dominion, you compartmentalize. So like we determined that the quarry wasn't good at the start and we're just not going to buy it anymore. <laughs> we've determined that the witch is not good once the curse is run. So that's out in farmland. We've decided not to play with here. I, and I'm not quite, I'm not sure that it makes sense too, but um, farmland and gold in the province feels like something that could come up in this kingdom. Um, yeah, farmland fortress into far farmland is fun. Although we're action limited here. Again, these turns where we end on one action are really, really sad because we wasted a courtier play on plus action earlier. This could have been plus three points. Um, I think, you know, we, we have three horses in a hunting party with four poppers set aside. So next turn is going to be big for a sounder. This could even be a farmland here, I think, to be honest. Um, with the plan to buy a farmland, turning that into province next turn. As a little bit better than a duchy, perhaps, but... Um, this gets harder now, because if, if um, Sporting Elijah buys two provinces, as Sounders in a tough position, I think. We'll see see what this witch draws. We're, we're, we're very, very close to this uh, not working out, but it looks like... We found, found some stuff. So we, we play the courtier first, which enables us to potentially find it with the, the hunting party, which makes some sense. And we're researching. Yeah, I would have hoped to play that fortress and potentially draw the hunting party, but um, here I guess we research cavalry to get to the end of the shuffle. Um, if we pull back the gold, we could buy farmland, gain province. That seems like a little bit more dense VP than province dungeon. Um, so should have that same pileup. Yeah. So so pretend that pileup uh, pretend. Yeah, pretend Cory doesn't exist, and pretend the fortress hunting part. The fortress hunting party pileout seems much more straightforward, but I guess they're not thinking about triumphal arch points at this point. So, if that's the case, then you know, I guess you just get like province farmland or province duchy as a sounder here, and try to set aside tons of stuff with research, so you can you either try to hit thirteen or fourteen as your price point, and set aside a bunch of separate research to make sure you kick off next turn. And as soon as we find a, as soon as we find a courtier, I think we're going to have our um, have our price point. Fourteen in hand right now. Yeah, and there's yeah. If we just play all three horses here, pretty much everything we we do wins. Whether we do the court pile out or the fortress hunting party pile out. Or the cavalry courtier pile out, which still seems possible given the amount of money that we have. Um, all those things seem to work. But yeah, if they're not seeing those pile outs, then province farmland feels like the best 
line here to me. Um, like you play the dungeon now, discard the two horses, and then research the fortress. So you get those two horses at the top of your next shuffle. But you can't double province, obviously, because you're, you know, Sporting Elijah double provinces, they win, and they've got seven cards set aside on their research mat, so they're pretty likely to draw next turn. Well, then you can't province. Oh, why would you farm a fortress? Uh, yeah, I guess you could farmland fortress, or you farmland cavalry or something. You farmland witch. Nothing. Into nothing, yeah. Or copper into a state. Doesn't seem... No, I don't think you want uniques, I guess, is the issue. So, um, we played the fortress now. You know what? If you don't notice the pile out here, you're in big trouble. Like, I don't see them. Well, you can gain a gold with Cordae. If, if you can gain a gold... And province farmland. I think next turn you're threatening to bot. You'd need 20 money. Oh, and that extra gold. You need 23 money. Basically, you're threatening to triple province at that point anyways. Um, I but guess Sporting Elijah doesn't have research and deck, so you could play for a dud two turns for now. I mean, if you... So if, if, if Asunder buys province... Let's say they buy province farmland and they turn... So that, I mean, they can even turn horse into duchy, to be honest. But let's say they turn fortress into gold or something. Um, they gain an extra gold. They're at 37 and 38 if they do province duchy. And Sporting Elijah can't touch provinces, so they just have to do three duchies or something. It seems... Um, I am confused by what S. Sander is doing here, though. I guess. Yeah, it's a unique card. It's a terminal. Um, researching the witch. Yeah, poor horse, but. Um, so if you pull a gold back, you can buy province. You don't really want to farmland a gold this turn, though, right? Uh, we could also just buy a <laughs> party of three fortresses for the win. Um, we agreed we were we were agreed we were going to ignore those those lines. Wait, they see it. Oh, they see that they're up. <laughs> Excellent. They saw it. They got the three pile. They won the triumph large points, and uh, good game there for S Sounder. They were first player, and they opened five to win a witch board. So. Um, Tough, tough opening split there for Elijah, and we move on to game two.